Hey everyone. So in this video, I want to show how you can run spark.net within a .NET interactive notebook. And since we're using .NET interactive, I'm here in the Visual Studio Code Insiders build, since that is still in preview. And so let's create a new blank notebook. All right, so I got a new notebook and we're gonna use NuGet to bring down Microsoft.Spark. And I'm gonna bring down 0.12 version here. Now version one was recently released not too long ago, but I'm gonna do a separate video on how you can upgrade using that. Then let's bring in the Microsoft.Spark.SQL namespace. And let's create a session using Spark session dot builder dot app name and give it app name uh, we'll do housing so we're going to use the housing data set for a bit and then get or create and we get an error here saying no connection could be made that is because uh, if you remember from the spark.net crash course video we did a, a while back you needed to run the special spark submit command in the command line and so that's kind of what we have to do here and I'm actually using the location where we have that code from that Spark the Net crash course because we need the location where it brings in that Microsoft Spark jar and all the other stuff that it needs. But the thing is here, we don't need to specify a specific DLL for it to use. Instead, we use the debug command and we run that. There it goes. So now it's started and now it's in kind of a, a waiting mode for commands to appear. So we can rerun this session and now that works and let's bring in our uh, housing data here using our session the read command give it a few options first a header we'll say it's true and has a header and another option turn on to infer the schema and put that at true and a third option we'll give it a delimiter of a comma and then the CSV method and give it a path. And we just give it housing.csv. There we go. So we got that loaded. And we can do housing.show. And show the first kind of 20 rows here. And we can see that it parsed everything out correctly. And we do housing.schema to show the schema, or rather, print schema to show what schema that inferred to it on it. So everything's double except the ocean proximity, which is a string. And one thing I want to kind of highlight here is that we can use Spark SQL on our data set. So we can do select everything from housing and then do a dot show on it to show everything. But this won't work because in order for Spark SQL to work, we need a table or view for it. So if, to do that, we do housing dot create or replace temp view. We can do global view as well, but we'll do temp in this case, and I'll call it housing data, and then select everything from housing data. There we go. So that got everything. Uh, we can do the usual SQL statements here. So we can limit to the first ten rows, and we can do some other more sophisticated SQL statements such as select like ocean proximity and then the count from housing data we can group by ocean proximity and then show that so that groups the ocean proximity and gives us the ocean proximity text and then the count of each of these as the group we see island there's only five items in the data set that have ocean proximity of island and then the most of them are within less than an hour to the ocean all right so kind of a quick video there but i wanted to show uh, how you can use spark.net within dotnet interactive in case you want to use that for your data analysis so i hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching